Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today is all about quality. I am going to be diving into Bamboo Studios, and we are going to be going through all of the different quality settings and presets. That way you can get the most beautiful 3D prints. Not only that, I am going to show you one of my favorite settings in Bamboo Studio, where you can actually increase the quality in certain areas of your 3D prints to be able to get beautiful results. So let's not waste any more time and get into this video. Before we get started, I wanted you to just see what version of Bamboo Studio I'm running. I am on version 1.7.4.52, and this is the most current up-to-date version as of right now. So if you're watching this in the future and some things may be different, it might be because you have a newer version. So let's go ahead and get started. All I'm going to do is click here onto New Project and it's going to instantly create a project for me. And now let me just load in a model by clicking this add right here. So I've got my model loaded and this is just a little duckling from Inspired. I thought this would be a good little test because it's support free and we'll be able to see the quality pretty easily. So when it comes to quality, it really boils down to your layer height. And your layer height is how thick each layer is printing and that is determining whether your prints are going to be very smooth or you can see those layer lines. Now depending on what you're printing, sometimes you don't want to see any layer lines and other times it doesn't really matter, you're just printing something more for utility. So you just need something to be printed. Now the great thing about Bamboo Studio is they already have all of the presets for you and the presets, honestly, they do a really good job. I use the presets a lot. But there's a few things here and there that I'll change. Let me just go ahead and show you where the defaults are. And they're right here in this drop down menu. Now you can just click this and right here you can see all of the defaults. And it goes from a 0 0.08 millimeter extra fine all the way down to a 0.28 extra draft. Which means this is a thinner layer height, this is a thicker layer height. Now let me just show you what this really boils down to. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Slice Plate right in here in the top right hand corner. Now you can see here when we zoom in all of the layers and it's a lot. So we're going to come over here to the right bar and you can see there are 622 layers in this 3D print. And the nice thing is, is you can actually just click this little plus and drag it down and you can see every single layer that is being created. Now, let me just jump over to the extreme to the 0.28. Now this one has 178 layers, a whole lot less. And if we zoom down here, we can see every single layer being printed. Now you might be wondering what is the difference really besides the layer height. The biggest thing for most people is time. So you can see right here, this is only gonna take me 35 minutes and 40 seconds to print in total. Now, if I jump right back to the eight millimeter layer height, you can see this is gonna take me an hour and 39 minutes. Now that is still pretty quick just because we're printing on a bamboo printer and they just print lightning fast. But that is increasing your time by a lot. So if you're really trying to get something done fast, right here in extra draft or draft is really what you're wanting to do. Now, the biggest things when it comes to your layer heights is the plateauing that you can get. And what I mean by the plateauing, it's right here on the very top. And I specifically chose this model because it has a rounded top. A rounded top point, those are usually where you can see the layer lines the worst. And you can start to see here where you can start to see the width of the lines as they move towards the center. And then on the very last few layers, you can see these edges. You also can experience this when you've got a very soft angle on the very top of your model. So if we come down here to the bill as well, you can see how it is actually giving you these little layers right here. And that is the plateauing that you can get. And let me go ahead and I'm gonna turn off the seams right here. Now you can see both sides of it, of where it's actually going all the way around in a circle and then back down. And if we come down, we can see how it starts to kind of form on each layer. 
Now the big difference here is that we're looking at the very top of the model when we're changing our layer heights. So this is a 0 0.08 millimeter layer height, and this is super, super thin. Now just think about this. A human hair is on average about 0.12 millimeters thick. So we are thinner than a human hair right now. Now if I switch to draft, you can see how much plateauing you're going to really get because it's a lot thicker than the layer line itself. So then it starts to fill it in and then draw the next one. So this is really where the quality shines because when you're on draft mode like this right here, that's where this plateauing really just shows. And if we come back down to the bill, we can see that it's actually going to be filling in some too here. So if I come down, you can see how much bigger these layers are because the layers are a lot thicker. Now, it's one of those things that every single time you're 3D printing, you really want to consider, do I want to print this fast and have an okay quality, or do I want to print this slow and have a really nice fine quality? So here's a perfect side view of the 0.28 extra draft preset mode. And you can see that these are the layer lines right here and how it starts to do this stair stepping or plateauing. Now let me just switch back to the 0.08 so you can see the big difference here. Now look at that. Like we have a lot less plateauing and the stair stepping is a lot more gradual. And what this means is it's going to give you a lot smoother of a finish because you can always take a piece of sandpaper and sand the tops of these, but then if you're not going to paint it, you're gonna really start to see a lot of those scratches and stuff like that from the sandpaper. So if you have an AMS and you're doing a color 3D print or a multicolor 3D print, you don't really wanna sand this. You wanna just leave it as is. So sometimes if you get a finer quality, you're gonna get a lot better of a result and then you're not going to see that plateauing. Now understand that I am showing you the two extremes because you can see there's a lot more options here. Now the 0 0.08 takes an hour and 39 minutes, but if I jump down to say the 0 0.12, this is gonna take an hour and eight minutes. So this cuts down a lot, but you can still see that the plateauing isn't as bad. And if we look at from the top, it's literally just the last two layers is really where you start to see that infill right there. So I strongly recommend you just looking through these settings and trying to figure out what you wanna go with because the tops is usually where I look at. When I'm changing to different layer heights, I'm gonna be looking at the top and I'm like, hmm, okay, I got a little bit of plateauing here and here. It is gonna speed up my time though. And this is gonna be a nice print. A 0.2 millimeter layer height really does give you nice prints. Now, the one thing is, is if you have a very tiny model, you might wanna go with a smaller layer height so you can get that detail. And the detail is the one thing I will say, that when you are printing in a smaller layer height, you're going to get more details. The larger of a layer height, the less details. So you can see here at the little hair tuft right here, it's just barely putting a little bit of filament at the very top to get that point. But if I do a 0 0.08, I'm going to get more of a rounded point like the model itself. Because if we switch over to the model, you can see that it is more of a rounded. So it's a lot more accurate to the 3D model. So when you're dealing with a layer height that is a lot larger, it's kind of just averaging the lines of the geometry and trying to match it as best as it can. But if you're on a smaller layer height, you're going to be able to get a lot more of an accurate print. So those are other things that you need to consider when you're actually 3D printing your models. Do you want it to be very accurate because maybe you're painting it and you, it's got really great detail and you want to get every bit of that detail? Well then a lower layer height is going to give you that detail. So like say if there was like a, a mesh pattern or something like that or there's like a texture of cloth you're gonna be able to see that a lot better with a lower layer height like a 0 0.08 or a 0 0.12 layer height. Now, if you're on the, the draft or a higher layer height like a 0.24, you're going to lose some of those details. So you just wanna consider, do I want to have all of the details and have a more accurate model? Then a lower layer height is the way to go. But if it doesn't really matter and you're just printing something because it's more of a utility 3D print 
or it's just some kind of doodad that you're wanting to make, then a higher layer height is perfectly fine. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to this. It's really down to your preference. Now, some 3D artists will put a ton of detail in their 3D prints. And if you really want to get that detail to shine, then you want to go with more of an extra fine or a fine preset. So that being said, the next settings down here is your layer height. Now, your layer height is exactly the same thing right here. But this has the presets where it'll automatically change other things besides the layer height for you. But if you say you want to go with a 0.2 millimeter layer height and do the strength setting, this will actually give you a stronger 3D print because it's also increased the infill. So if I want a stronger infill and I still want it to look really nice, I could click on strength. It changes all of the settings for me. So then I could change this to just a 0.08. So now I'm going to have a very fine detail of a layer height, but it's also going to be nice and strong for me. So if I slice this, I can come down through here and I can see that it's got a very dense infill and the layer heights are very fine. But I could also change this back to say a 0.2 or even a 0.12. Now the one thing I will say when you're dealing with a different layer height, I still would stick to these specific sizes because that is what the bamboo printers are really optimized for. So you can change these to whatever you want, but I'm going to tell you, you might not get the results you want if you change them into any other setting. Now if you have been changing your layer height down here, you can just click this little icon right here, the little circle with an arrow and it will automatically reset this to whatever setting that you had up here. The next thing is your first layer height. It is set to a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now this is just the very first layer. So if I have this at a 0.8 millimeter layer height, and then you can see my first layer is at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And what that is doing is it's giving it the very first layer, a nice thick layer. And this is something you do not want to change because this is giving you a thick layer, so it has a very great first layer. You want your first layers thicker to be able to get it to stick to the bed really well. And this is what that does. Now, I tell you what, you're not gonna even be able to tell when it comes to this. It's not going to affect your print at all, but it is something you definitely want to do. So when it comes to this, I personally would tell you I would never change this. This is what I do for all of my 3D printers, even the 3D printers that are not bamboo printers, because this ensures a really good first layer. And you do not want to change it just because if it's a thin layer, it could possibly break off during the 3D print and cause your print to fail. So that is the basics of everything you need to know when it comes to your layer heights and the quality and how it affects it. All right, real quick. I just got to say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be like these amazing people, you will also get exclusive access to my behind-the-scenes content as well as access to my private Discord channels where we talk about 3D printing, painting, fixing our 3D printers, and all the fails that we might have and how to get around them. But... It's a great community, and it's growing every day. If you're interested, I'll go ahead and put a link below for you. Other than that, let's get back to this video. So I went ahead and printed these benchies in all of the different presets, and I just want to go over each one of these with you and show you what the real difference is on the presets themselves. Now these are straight off the printer, so you will see a little bit of fuzzy and stringing and stuff like that because I wanted to show you exactly what it looks like right when you get it off the bed. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the extra fine preset, and this is at a 0 0.08 millimeter layer height. Now when we really zoom into this, you can see some of those layer lines, and it really, I mean, let's be honest, they are super fine, super fine. But there they are, and this is the highest quality that you can get. Now the big thing is, is the top, that slight slope, and this is where you get the least amount of stair stepping or this plateauing at the very top. And this does a really good job. So if you're looking for something where the layer lines aren't showing through, 
honestly, this is the one to go with because honestly, look at this. Like the layer lines are just, you can barely see them. Now moving up, this is a 0.12, and this is the fine setting. Now the fine setting is just as good, honestly. So if you're also wanting to get little layer lines, this is a really good setting. Now you can see these layer lines a little bit more, but we are zoomed in like crazy right now. But this is still super smooth. Now when we look at the top where the stair stepping occurs, you can see this still looks really good. And just remember, we're really zoomed in here. And it is nice. It's a nice slope and it accommodates that angle pretty well. But when it comes to the layer lines, I, I use this setting quite a bit because it's a little bit faster than the extra fine and it still looks really nice. So now let's go to the optimal setting. And this one is the 0.16 millimeter layer height. And when we zoom into this, we can see these lines just a little bit better. And they're really starting to show, but it's still a very smooth, clean print. And that's the big thing here. We want clean prints and this really does give us a nice result. You can see how smooth with that reflection it's giving us. But now we're starting to see that separation between each layer, just barely, but we're really starting to see it now. Now when we look at the top of this, you can see that the plateauing is starting to be a little more prominent. And that is just because the layer heights are starting to get thicker. And it's going to get worse and worse as we go. But you can see it still is very smooth and when it comes to that stair stepping, it's not, not not terrible, honestly. Another place you can see that is really at the front of the little ship. You can see all of these little uh, lines and the stair stepping of that angle. But honestly, this is still giving us a really good clean result and I use this one quite a bit too. The optimal setting is a really nice one if you're just wanting a little bit faster and still having a nice clean print. Now let's go to the standard 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now you can already see all of those little lines are showing through really well. You can see them. But the thing is, is when you're printing at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, this is when you're really just trying to get something 3D printed. This is what I go to for more of my utility 3D prints, when I'm just trying to get some kind of doodad or whatever it might be. Typically, if I'm not painting it, I am using the standard 0.2 millimeter layer height. It still gives us a nice smooth finish, and honestly all of these give us a smooth finish. It's just those lines that you really start to see. And that is the big key here, is the lines. And this is where it starts to get more prominent. When we're looking at the top here, you can see that all of these little stair steps, the plateauing of each layer on that very soft slope. And this is very prominent, and especially in comparison. So you see that this is a 0 0.08, the extra fine, and then this is the 0.2. So you can see that there is a big difference because there's a lot more layers here and a lot less layers here. So this is one of those things, if you have a slight angle on your 3D prints, I usually will go to a more optimal or a, a more fine preset. But that's the thing, if I have a slight slope on my 3D print and I want it to look as best as it can, this is where I go. I go to the extra fine because we're going to have more layers to be able to accommodate for that subtle gradation. Now the one thing to note, there are two settings when it comes to a 0.2 millimeter layer height. There's the standard and the strength. The standard is your typical two layer wall count and then the infill is at a 15. But when you're doing the strength, the outside is going to look the exact same except for it's giving you more of an infill to make that stronger and it's giving more walls to be able to make the shell even stronger. Now the one thing about the strength, it will make a strong 3D print, but it will increase your 3D print time. So if you're needing something really strong, then the strength is the way to go because it's going to increase all of those things and make it a strong 3D print. But if you're not really worried about strength, then honestly, I just stick with the standard. 
And that is also something that you can go in and mess with the settings once you've checked the strength. Maybe you want to just have a thick wall count or something like that. But it is a really nice thing that there is a preset to give you a really strong 3D print versus just a regular 3D print at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now moving on to the draft setting, which is a 0.24 millimeter layer height. Now you can really start to see these lines. These lines are showing up like crazy. And this is one of those things. If you don't care about layer heights and you just want to have a 3D print because it's more of a functional 3D print, draft is really nice. I've used it twice already on two separate things that were more utility and they, they turned out great because I wasn't really looking at the layer heights and I, I wasn't painting it. So this is one of those things that can save you a lot of time because it's a lot faster because there's a lot less layers. And when you look at this subtle gradation, you can see that honestly, we can count how many layers there are here. And that is one of those things, if it matters to you, then this is definitely not something that you want to use. But on the other side of that, if you don't care, then Draft is a great preset for you. And when it comes to not caring about layer lines, this is as thick of a layer height as you can get with the stock nozzle on the bamboos. And this is the extra Draft, a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And look at these lines. I mean, they are very noticeable. And even when you're not looking at it through a macro lens like we are right now, you can see those layer lines. But look at this. It still is a very smooth, clean print. It gives nice walls and gives it really nice and smooth. But when we look at the top here, this is as bad as it gets. And to show the two spectrums, this is a 0.08, our extra fine, and then this is our extra draft. You can see these are just straight up stairs, while this is a nice subtle gradation up. And these are the things that you need to be thinking about. Like, do I care if there's a bunch of like ridges and stairs and plateaus on the tops of my model? Or do I really want it to be as smooth as possible? And this is the thing I keep saying, you know, the further you get to this, then the more rough your 3D prints are going to look on the tops of the models. And now, because remember, the sides are still nice and smooth. You just see those layer lines. But on the extra fine, all of the ridges and things like that are going to be as smooth as you can physically get them. Now, if you're prototyping things out and you just want to get some prints to just double check and see if everything's working out for you, then this is a really good setting. I've used this a couple times because of a few little prints that I've you know modeled in Tinkercad and I wanted to see what it was going to look like. And the prints were super fast and I was able to get something and tell whether I need to make any adjustments. And I actually did. And the adjustments I did, I then I printed it on a finer layer height. So the final result, I wasn't using this, but for the tests, I was using this. So that is just another thing to think about when you're actually using these layer heights. Because if you're just testing out things for prototyping, then the draft or extra draft are really good to use that for. But on the other side of that, if you just don't care and you want to get something 3D printed, it doesn't look bad. Like, it's just, it's got layer lines, and some people don't care. I know I am a stickler, and I want to be able to have the nicest quality as I can, so I, I'm always looking at this. But you might not care. Now, here is the one thing that I will also show you, and this, honestly, is one of the coolest things when it comes to Bamboo Studio. And this is variable line height. And what that means is I can actually 3D print this and have multiple line heights and it change throughout my 3D print. Now, all you have to do is click on your model and make sure that you're over here and prepare. Now your top bar right here, and you're gonna see this little icon up here and it's going to be your variable layer height icon. Now to enable the variable layer height, all you have to do is click the button. Now it's going to give you all kinds of crazy colors and you're going to be wondering what all of this is. So the first thing is it's going to pop up this little dialog box for you. Now the first setting you're going to have is adaptive and this is your quality and speed. Now the lower you go with this, 
the higher your quality is going to be and the slower your print is going to be. Then the higher you go, the lower the quality and the faster the 3D print. So if I bring this all the way down and click adaptive, it is going to be 3D, 3D printing my layer height very thin. But then if I go all the way up, I can hit adaptive and it's going to have a lot thicker of layer heights to be able to print this faster. So I've reset this back to a 0.5 on the quality and speed and clicked adaptive. Now, the colors are pretty important so you can understand what they do. Now, white is whatever layer height you have your 3D print set to. So if we come over here, you can see I have this set to a 0.2 millimeter layer height. So when you see white, that is what it's actually going to be 3D printing. Then green is a higher quality and orange is a lower quality. So anything lower than a 0.2 is going to be changed to more of a green and anything higher than a 0.2 is going to turn into this orange color. You can also see this on the right side here that have got this bar and this is really where it's showing you how it's changing layer height. So right at the top of the head it is printing it at a 0.08 millimeter layer height and that is because it's going to give you less plateauing to be able to increase the quality of your 3D print. And also if you notice, right where any plateaus are actually showing up, that is where it's actually turning this dark green. So if I just move my mouse all the way up here at the very top of the bill, you can see that it's a 0.08 millimeter layer height. And that is to accommodate for the top of this bill where we have the plateauing. And same thing here at the top of the toes, and that way we're having less plateauing. Now, when it comes to our radius, which is the next setting up here, this is the smooth. How smooth of a radius we're going to have in between these transitions. So if I increase this and click smooth, you can see that it's a lot smoother of a transition and it's not going so far into like a 0.28 millimeter layer height or it's not going all the way up to a 0.08 millimeter layer height. It's smoothing it out because this can be noticeable when you're looking at your 3D prints to where you can see that it's super smooth on the neck and then like say on the cheek or something, it starts to show your layer lines. So if I reset this and then click smooth again on my point one, you can see that now it's going to have some really thick layer lines around the, the belly here and then even up at the top of the head. But you can also move this up to like maybe a five, click smooth again, and then you can keep clicking smooth and it'll keep smoothing those out to where you can really get a nice gradation of layer heights. Now if we reset the model again and click adaptive, we can see it's right back to all of these stripes. Now this is the one thing I really like about this setting, is you can actually smooth this out to however you want. So if you come over to the right side of this bar and you can kind of see these zigzags, this blue line determines your layer height. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually come to the very top and give me a nice layer height thickness on the very top. So at the very top, it is going to be at a 0.08 millimeter layer height. And I get that by just right clicking and dragging. And then you can see I could actually make this entire top at a 0.08 millimeter layer height. But if I didn't want that, all I have to do is left click and this would bring this all the way to a 0.28 millimeter layer height. So you can see that there's not much of a transition here. Now, just so you can understand this, let me go over to preview and slice this. So now that we have this sliced, you can actually see how thin the layers are at the very top of my model, but then how thick they start to get right here. And that is all because of how I've painted it. So when you're switching back and forth, you can see that here are the transitions and how it actually looks. So if I wanted to really smooth this out, I could just click and drag and really try to smooth it out. And to smooth it out, all I'm doing is right clicking and left clicking to smooth it out. 
Left click makes the quality go down, right click makes the quality go up. So if I slice this, we can see that the transition is a lot smoother now instead of that harsh transition that we did have. So these are just some of the things that you can do when it comes to getting the top of your model looking nice and getting rid of some of those plateaus. So when it comes to me, I like to try to make all of my layer heights kind of right where I want it, along that line to get that 0.2 millimeter layer height. Then right at the top, I can definitely make the quality a lot better at the top of this bill. But I just want to make sure that I can have a smooth transition to each one so it's not as noticeable. Now the one thing when you're doing the variable line height, when you're slicing this, you're going to notice that some of the times are actually changing. So this is going to take 49 minutes because there's more layers in this 3D print. Now if I removed my variable line height, you can see that it's only 44 minutes. So 44 minutes versus 49 minutes isn't a whole lot, but it's one of those things that this is a small little thing on the build plate. If you have a very large model, then it might increase your print time a whole lot. So let me go ahead and we're going to print this just on the defaults so you can see really what it looks like up close. All right, so I printed these ducts with the variable layer height. And if you see here, this is just a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And you see this top, the crown right here of that plateauing. And this is also noticeable on the top of the bill right here. And when you get to the toes and things like that, you can kind of see those little, like, honestly, one of the toes is literally just two layers. Now, this is the same all the way through. Now, I also 3D printed the result of us using the variable layer height. And if you see here, this is at a 0.08 millimeter height on the very top. But you can also see these gradations of how the lines get thicker. And this is one of those things that you can actually change the thickness of your layer heights to be able to get results like this. Because this looks really nice on the top. And when we're looking at the bill, you can see that there is still that stair stepping, but I increased the layer height. Versus when we're looking at this one, and you can see the big difference. I mean, you... <laughs> I mean, look at that, like there is a huge difference here. So you can see here how the layer thickness is changing versus a comparison of this one. It's the exact same all the way through. But this one, we can see the differences of how the layers are actually changing here. Like it got thicker in the middle of the eye here and then it started tapering off and getting thinner. So if you're 3D printing a part and you have a slight gradation on the very top, this is a really good setting to just mess with because no one says that you've got to do it all the way through the model like I did, like on the bill here and on the top of the head. This is really just something that you can play around with and use it however you want. If you want to just put it on the very top of your model to be able to get it looking like this versus looking like this, then it's a really good setting. But this setting is a really good thing to just kind of have in your arsenal because looking at this, the differences, I mean, we could print this entire print at a 0.2 and then just on the very top change it and then we're going to have a lot nicer of a top. And it doesn't add a ton of time to your print time if you're just doing something like this or if you're just doing it to the bill right here, you can actually get a lot smoother of a result that way it's more accurate to the model that you're making. So now you can make quality 3D prints. Now I'm making more of these Bamboo Studio tutorials and if there's something that you've been struggling with, leave me a comment in the description and I can make a tutorial on that to help you out. Other than that, I wish you a great day and I will see you over here in this next video.